The Coney Island Cyclone is one of the most famous roller coasters in the world. This coaster is a New York City staple, and it has been thrilling guests for nearly 100 years. This classic attraction has the distinction of being on the National Register of Historic Places, and it also regularly places in the top 25 of Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards for the best wooden coaster. The Cyclone features a super compact layout packed with thrills, so it's no surprise it has been cloned several times. However, there is nothing quite like the original. So in this video, I will explain why this historic coaster is now one of the most underrated coasters out there. In 1927, Vernon Keenan designed and Harry Baker built one of the largest coasters at that time. The Cyclone would stand 75 feet or 23 meters tall and traverse 2,640 feet or 800 meters of track. These stats are pretty pedestrian today, especially compared to most steel coasters, but they were monstrous for the 1920s. Cyclone had a successful first four decades of operation, but by 1964, all three of Coney Island's major theme parks had closed. The Cyclone was sold to the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation, and the ride's future was in doubt. Adjacent to the Cyclone was the newly built New York Aquarium. In 1967, the city wanted to demolish the Cyclone in favor of an expansion to the aquarium. The Cyclone continued to operate while plans for the aquarium were fleshed out, but the coaster became standing but not operating in 1970 due to its deteriorating state and nearly 100 safety violations. Once the New York Aquarium's expansion plans were officially announced, the Save the Cyclone campaign kicked off to try to prevent the demolition of this classic attraction. While the campaign seemed like a long shot, it actually worked. By 1974, New York City decided to lease the coaster to a private operator. And in 1975, the adjacent Astroland Amusement Park reached a deal to lease the Cyclone for $57,000 per year from the city. Astroland then spent an additional $60,000 to refurbish the Cyclone and triumphantly returned later that year. The Cyclone will be Astroland's signature attraction for the next three decades until the park closed its gates in 2008. At this point, the Cyclone was a protected landmark, so while most of Astroland was closed and demolished, Cyclone operated as an independent entity for the next three years. Then in 2011, Luna Park, which was built on the site of Astroland, took over the operations of Cyclone and have operated the coaster ever since. And by all accounts, the ride is running better than ever now. The ride has long had a reputation as a wild and rough ride, but Luna Park has invested mightily to restore this coaster to its former glory. Great Coasters International completed a full refurbishment in 2016, and now it's running pretty smoothly, considering the ride's age and aggression. While it seemed like the city and different operators have played a game of hot potato with the Cyclone over the years, the ride's impact and importance to the city is undeniable. This ride has a mythical presence. And the park sort of feeds on that by exaggerating some of the ride's stats. Cyclone's height is listed as 85 feet or 26 meters by the park, which is deceptive. This is the height from the top of the remain seated sign, not the coaster itself. And then the ride's top speed is listed as 60 miles per hour or 97 kilometers per hour. And I highly doubt that figure is accurate for a coaster of this height. Most rides of this size have a top speed closer to 45 or 50 miles per hour. The Cyclone's impact is extended beyond New York City. This coaster has been cloned at least seven times. Six Flags alone cloned this coaster four times, and then a few others operated overseas. However, none of these clones ever matched the magic and intensity of the original. While Cyclone is operated by Luna Park, it's not exactly in the park. Cyclone is literally located on the intersection of Surf Avenue and West 10th Street. It's a pretty surreal location to see a roller coaster. And this coaster's presentation is top notch. The white steel supports and sea of hills are visually appealing. And then the vertical neon sign, even when some of the letters aren't illuminated, still looks fantastic. It just oozes history. There are two ways to ride Cyclone. First, you can purchase a $10 ticket at the ticket booth adjacent to the main entrance. It may be pricey, but plenty of people are willing to pay that price for this famous coaster. 
Second, the Cyclone is included on the Luna Park wristbands. This is the route you want to take if you want to get multiple rides on this coaster, and I suspect you may once you learn how amazing it is. Because of Coney Island's high prices, Cyclone is a walk-on most days, and most of these visits have taken place on summer weekends. The only time I've had a sizable wait for the Cyclone was on Luna Park's opening day a few years ago, when they offered wristbands for the super low price of just $5. And even when the Cyclone had a full queue line, it only took about 20 minutes. The Cyclone usually has a large crew. I've seen upwards of 8 employees working this attraction at once. When there's a full trainload of people waiting, they will have some of the fastest dispatches of any coaster. They know the more people they pump through, the more money they make. However, this is one of those rides where the operators will deliberately hold back a train for a few minutes waiting for more guests. Part of it may be weight related. On one of my rides this past summer, I was the only person on the train and several employees actually had to ride with me. The front car now has to be filled for the Cyclone to dispatch. It didn't used to be this way though. When I originally rode the Cyclone 2012 and 2016, you could choose any available seat. Now it's a bit more complicated. Cyclone runs a single train with three cars, each with four rows. The front car has the strongest laterals, however, my favorite seat is easily the back. The airtime is the most violent and extreme back there. However, that can be a challenging seat to get nowadays. In order to ride in the back car, the first two cars have to be completely filled. If there's enough people in line to fill those front two cars, you can head straight for the back. But if there isn't enough people, you are forced to fill in the first two cars. Cyclone has a giant sign in the queue line stating you cannot wait for the front or back cars. However, you can game the system. If you want the front, wait until the prior train is dispatched and then jump in the queue line. You will get first pick and can easily select the front. If you want the back, I typically linger outside the main entrance waiting for enough people to enter the line so the back car will open up. Once that happens, I'll hop in line. There are a few notable things about the load platform. First, there is a manned baggage check at the back of the station. You get a wristband with a designated cubby so your items are safely secured while you ride. Second, there are no gates. Not just air gates, no gates at all. You stand right up against the track waiting for the train. Three, this coaster is manually operated with these oversized levers in the station. It's always a treat to see coasters operate in this fashion because of how rare it is now. Now let's talk about the trains. They are one of a kind and I love them. They may be the most padded coaster trains in the world. They are super cushiony on all sides and it feels like you're riding on a couch. And that's certainly a good thing when you learn how many laterals this coaster dishes out. It throws you around. And on that note, I strongly recommend riding by yourself in each row. One, the seats are super narrow, so if two adults ride together, you'll likely be squished together, possibly uncomfortably. Two, the ride is way more intense if you ride alone. Since Cyclone has no seat dividers and no seat belts, the laterals will throw you side to side across the row. It's a pretty surreal feeling I can't get on any other coaster. So what's the restraint then? You just have a single position lap bar. Your legs have a lot of clearance with the bar but the lap bar will press up against your stomach, so it can be a tight squeeze for larger guests. But I've never seen anyone denied to ride in the past. Meanwhile, I get several inches of room guaranteed, so I get plenty of airtime on Cyclone. Cyclone begins with a slow turn out of the station. You then ascend the ride's lift hill, which gives you a great view of the Atlantic Ocean and all the amusements of Coney Island. But once you crest over the drop, the mayhem begins. Cyclone kicks things off with one of the best drops on any coaster. It may only have a max angle of descent of 58 degrees, but that back car is absolutely whipped over the drop. Few coasters still cause that stomach dropping sensation for me, but the Cyclone's first drop does it without fail. Along with that butterfly sensation, those in the back car get some powerful ejector airtime. You are thrown into that lap bar, and it really is surprising how strong the airtime is considering the minimalistic restraints. Those in the middle car still get some airtime, but it's only mild floater. The pullout is pretty tight and it pulls some surprising positive G's. It's also the shakiest part of the ride by far. 
Most of Cyclone is pretty smooth now, thanks to GCI's refurbishment, but this first valley will throw you around. However, the super well padded trains absorb the blow well, so it isn't that uncomfortable. You then rise into the first turnaround. The top has zero banking, so you get a strong lateral slam. If you're in the front car, this is one of the most powerful bursts of laterals you can get on any coaster, as you're really pushed into that turn. And spoiler alert, this is not the last laterals you'll experience on Cyclone, because this coaster is barely any banking. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This turnaround also exhibits one of the potential flaws with Cyclone. You lose a ton of speed atop most hills. I can see this being a pacing killer for some people, but I don't mind. I consider pacing a measure of how quickly a coaster throws a great element at you. Speed certainly helps, but it really comes down to how fun each element is for me. And most of Cyclone's individual elements deliver airtime and or laterals, so I like everything this coaster throws at me. The drop off the first turnaround delivers good sustained floater airtime for those in the back car. After a valley filled with head choppers, you ascend a giant camelback underneath the first drop. Those up front get decent floater airtime in the ascent, while those in the back get weak ejector airtime on the descent. Those in the middle miss out though due to the lack of speed crest in the apex. You then rise into the second turnaround. This one offers a similarly intense lateral slam like the first turnaround, and it's extra potent if you are still pressed to the right side of the train from the first turnaround. Cyclone will mercilessly throw you to the left side of the train. The drop off this turnaround gives some weak ejector airtime in the back car. You then head over a camelback on the back side of the attraction. Now this element offers no airtime up front, but the back cars will get airtime because of an abrupt kink on the drop. The middle cars get floater airtime, and those in the back should brace themselves. This drop delivers one of the most abrupt and violent ejector pops out there, and because of the restraints, it can crush your nuts, but it's the price you must pay for an ejector airtime moment as strong as this with restraints as little as this. You then charge through the third turnaround. This one levels off before the turn, so those up front will get a good pop of airtime this time before getting that obligatory lateral slam. Those in the back will get the usual laterals first, but they intensify in the descent. Unlike the prior drops, this one is subtly curved the whole way down and those laterals are paired with a great pop of airtime too. Cyclone then ascends another camelback. This hill delivers a great pop of airtime for most riders, and also subtly twists to the left at the top, which throws riders to the right side of the train. This will set you up nicely for the upcoming turnaround. Cyclone then zooms over a little speed hill. Those up front get an abrupt pop of airtime on this hill, while the back two cars get decent floater airtime instead. You then whip around the fourth turnaround. Remember how the prior camelback had you on the right side of the train? Well this turnaround will violently slam you to the left. And since this turnaround is curved for its entirety, you are forcefully pinned to the side of the train. This is one of the strongest and most sustained lateral moments on any coaster. You then fly over this evil little speed hill. It delivers a good pop of airtime throughout the train, but that's not what makes it special. This hill subtly banks to the left, so while you're airborne, you are violently thrown to the right side of the train. It's moments like this that make the cyclone special. You then coast over a bunny hill. Those up front get a decent pop of airtime going over the hill, while those in the back get a stronger pop on the descent. Cyclone then has one final turnaround. You will be thrown to the left side of the train again, and held there. This turnaround is again curved for the majority so it offers strong and sustained laterals throughout. Cyclone then jumps into a tunnel, giving those up front one last pop of airtime before hitting the brakes. This ends the Cyclone. Despite the modest track length, Cyclone feels considerably longer, and I always return to the station with a big smile on my face. So what would I rate the Coney Island Cyclone? I would give this legendary coaster a 9.5 out of 10. When you ride Cyclone, you are literally riding history. Those trains are the secret sauce that make this coaster special. The lack of seat dividers and seat belts result in a crazy ride experience. Cyclone throws you about in the best way possible. The crushing laterals toss you side to side like a rag doll, and then many of the drops offer great airtime in the back row. 
Some may find Cyclone uncomfortable, but I love this aggressive ride because that aforementioned padding on the trains absorb all the blows. Really the only shaky part for me is that pull out from the first drop, but it's so short that it doesn't cause an issue. Now the reason I deduct a half point is because Cyclone is not an elite ride in all rows. The ride is near perfect in the back car, but you aren't guaranteed to get it. This coaster is still very good in the front car, but it's merely good in the middle car. The middle car still has great laterals, but it just doesn't have the airtime of the other cars. But if you get the back car in Cyclone, you're in for a top 10 wood coaster in my opinion. So those are my thoughts on the Coney Island Cyclone. What are your thoughts on this historic ride? Do you love this coaster as much as me? I would love to hear what you think about this classic down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.